Distinguished by his signature hockey mask, the overall look of Crystal Lake's resident killer might be mistaken as being somewhat similar from Friday to Friday. But that's not to say there hasn't been some major upgrades with every appearance. So in this video, we will be ranking all 12 versions of Jason Voorhees from worst to best. What is up, Scream Team? Zach Cherry here. Guys, I started this channel because I'm a huge horror geek, and if you're like me, you might want to consider hitting that subscribe button. If you are already subscribed, make sure to turn on those bell notifications, as it's the optimal way to make sure you never miss a single one of my videos. As always, a few caveats for this list. First off, we're only going to be ranking the versions of Jason as seen in the official Friday the 13th franchise. We also won't be including young Jason from the original film or Roy from A New Beginning. Secondly, these rankings are going to be based on the overall aesthetic of each version of Jason. That will include the mask, the makeup effects of Jason's face where applicable, and the clothing worn by Jason himself, as well as any other little flourishes added to the design. Lastly, these are just my personal opinions. They might not be your ideal ranking, but guess what? Welcome to the internet. With that in mind, toss this video a thumbs up and meet me in the comments down below to let me know how you would rank all 12 cinematic versions of Jason Voorhees. Coming in in last place is going to be the version from Freddy vs. Jason. I do want to preface this by saying that I am a huge fan of Kane Hodder as Jason. I think that he's probably the best Jason that plays the role. But similar to my rankings for the Michael Myers masks, I don't want the actor who's playing the role of Jason to be a deciding factor in how I rank them. I will say that I have nothing against Ken Kurzinger as Jason. As a matter of fact, I have mad respect for any of the actors who've played Jason throughout all of the movies. My biggest problem with this version isn't even the fact that he's way too big or, you know, bigger than Kane Hodder would have been or bigger than Freddy, but just the fact that his head seems so much smaller than the rest of his body. And then it's only exacerbated by the mask, which also seems too big for the face. And he's wearing that huge baggy jacket, which just adds to the overall look of everything being too oversized for him. Jason's skin kind of resembles a seal pelt here. It always looks like it's either wet or it's just some sort of shiny metallic finish to it. I don't like the fact that we can see the eyes through the mask so visibly that we could tell that the one droopy eye is really sad. Something that I will mention again on this list uh, is the fact that Jason has hair here, but it's the uh, long wispy hair, like sort of like the grayish white we see mostly in the New Line era. I can't really grade this one based on the design of Jason's face as we don't even really get to see it. There's the one quick shot of Kelly Rowland lifting up the mask to give him CPR, but then we barely get to see anything. And uh, even behind the scenes photos, there's not really anything that shows what it looked like. The mask itself doesn't seem to really want to commit to any one continuity. They do get the uh, triangle markings right, but then there's no ax wound to the forehead or motorboat damage to the side of the jaw. And I get that this is New Line and they were trying to distance themselves from the Paramount movies, but then Jason X and Jason Goes to Hell did include these details, so why not here? The only thing that I really like about this mask, which only occurs partway through the movie, is that Jason is left with the scratches from Freddy's claw across his mask. That's it. In 11th place is going to be Jason X, the uh, hockey mask version that we predominantly see throughout the movie. The biggest change about this one, mostly in the mask, is that it's not the same shape that we've seen in literally every other movie. While the other masks are round, this one is more angular, which can especially be seen with the nose. The mask does have all the previous axe and boat damage to it, but appears to be more subtle than usual. And the straps are connected on the inside of the mask rather on the outside. Jason Jason's skin tone here also seems a lot more human. This could be explained by the fact that in the movie they introduced this new mythology that states that Jason has the ability to regenerate lost and damaged tissue, which could suggest that he's slowly turning back into a human, even though I do not like that idea at all. It also looks like he has a lot more hair than usual. It's very patchy as well. You can especially notice that in that first scene where the guard throws the sheet over top of his head. And it's almost as if Kane Hodder is just wearing the Jason mask mask over top of his regular head. I think his wardrobe is kind of boring. It just, it looks like they were trying to go for part seven, but failed 
in every way possible. He's got that tattered up jacket, which doesn't even look like a jacket. It looks like a ratty shawl. In terms of the design of the face, we don't really get to see a good look at it here. It's just that quick shot of Adrian lifting the mask up when she's doing the autopsy on him. But judging by these production stills here, it just looks like someone took Jason's head and stuck it in a microwave for a minute. In 10th place is gonna be the hockey masked version from the 2009 reboot. Again, I wanna preface this by saying that this is nothing against Derek Mears. I think that every single one of these stuntmen and actors did a phenomenal job playing the role. I just find this design of Jason to be kind of boring and disproportionate. First off, there's way too much exposed neck here. Like the neck is huge and the mask is just this tiny little mask that sits on top of it. So it does look very awkward. I understand that they wanted to go back to a more traditional look for the mask as it does have the three red triangles again. But because this movie exists in a different timeline, we don't get any of that wear and tear continuity. I get that there wouldn't be any as he does find the mask in the movie so he wouldn't have had any history with it. But this mostly just looks like the Freddy versus Jason mask. It's not as dirty looking, but it still has that brown tinge to it. And if they were really wanting to go old school with the traditional look for Jason, then just give him a button down. Like what's with this jacket and shirt combo that was somehow popular in Freddy versus Jason? I, I don't understand why. And lastly, I don't really know what they're doing with Jason's face here. Like you can tell that they were going for the hair lip and the droopy eye, but mostly this just looks evocative of something from Wrong Turn. What's his name? Three Finger? He's got the wispy white hair and sort of a melted looking face. In ninth place is going to be Uber Jason. And honestly, I really hate the fact that I'm putting Uber Jason this low because it was such a novel idea to even do anything like that within the franchise. But it's all just part of the fun of how terrible Jason X is. I mean, it served the purpose that it was supposed to. He was dead and then came back to life through nanotechnology technology that turned him into a space cyborg. He looks like something out of Power Rangers. He's got the, the Predator style mask. You know, there's nothing inherently wrong with Uber Jason. He's just ranked this low because he's never going to be better than classic Jason. And I can't in good conscience put him over those other ones. So he just unfortunately lands here. In eighth place is going to be 2009 Sackhead Jason. This one actually might be the scariest Jason of all of them. He's just really freaky and it works very effectively as well. There are some differences from the part two Jason with this one, whereas that actually looks like a potato sack over top of his head tied up with a rope. This one just looks like a sheet that's been kind of wrapped around and tied up. Not gonna lie, if I saw this guy running towards me, I would probably shit myself. I also find that the sack complements the overall outfit with the jacket way better than the hockey mask does, as at least the sack covers the neck. One thing against this is that it's just, it's not very iconic, whereas the part two one, I feel pops out at you a little bit more. This one just seems like it was something torn out of a horror video game. In seventh place is gonna be Jason Lives. What I do like about this one is that it has a very distinct look that separates it from everything else in this franchise. At this point, he is a zombie, but there's this texture to his skin that sort of makes it look like tree bark. I do like the fact that he's sort of a collector of things in this movie. He's always picking up new accessories as he moves along. He starts with Tommy's yellow gloves from the beginning and then takes the utility belt from the paintballer. But I guess the one minor gripe I have about that is that Jason as a zombie now, how does he have the wherewithal to do any of that? It's like he's looking at this belt and thinking that that's really gonna complement the rest of my ensemble. I could see him doing this in Friday two, three, or four, but by this point, he's just a walking corpse. Like, why is he collecting shit? The mask is also kind of off in terms of continuity. The black straps are now brown leather, and there's only one red triangle just on the brow, which doesn't appear to be worn off like it was at the end of Friday the 13th, the vinyl chapter. It could be reason that this was a new design built by Tommy, as he did like to make his own masks, or maybe he did actually hold on to Jason's mask and cleaned it up a little, as it does look less scuffed up here and it's repainted, and he could have put on the new straps, but that doesn't explain why the axe wound in the forehead is now a lot 
narrower than it was before. Obviously, it's a Friday the 13th movie, so I'm not gonna overthink it, but I will say that I prefer the look of the black straps over the brown leather. In sixth place is Jason from Jason Goes to Hell. It really is a shame that we don't get to see a lot of Jason in this movie, because I think that this is one of the more innovative character designs that they've done. It looks like they were going for a more mutated, diseased look here, where his skin has bubbled up and grown around the mask, embedding it into his face. And because it's embedded right into the skin, this is the only time that we never actually see Jason's face under the mask. Even though the Part 7 mask split in half, this looks a lot closer to the continuity of that one, with the chewed up side and just the one triangle. But the straps are brown, and the mask seems to show some fire damage. I've heard a lot of people conjecture that the look of Jason in this movie is a direct cause of the ending of Part 8, where he gets the toxic waste thrown in his face and then drowned in the sewer with even more toxic waste. But I mean, that was Paramount. This is New Line. I don't think that they were really thinking too much about the continuity here. They just wanted to upgrade the design of Jason, and they probably had a bigger budget to do it as they weren't going to actually use Jason throughout most of the movie. Also, he has those, um, those straps strands of the light wispy hair again. And this might be the only time where I actually like that look on the design of Jason. That's it, just this one. In fifth place is going to be Sackhead Jason from part two. And it pains me that I have to put him in fifth place because I absolutely adore Sackhead Jason. I've had this figure from Sideshow Collectibles for I don't know, like 20 years, whenever it first came out. I don't prefer him over the hockey mask version, but I just love the fact that it's like a hillbilly <laughs> with a sack on his head. Especially when you see the look of the face underneath the mask, it's basically just Quasimodo from Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. The design of the face was obviously inspired by the Elephant Man, and the mask was inspired by the town that dreaded sundown. They clearly wanted to go for more of the backwoods hillbilly, because he's sporting the denim overalls and the blue plaid shirt. And then, of course, the sack is just secured around his neck with some loose rope, indicating that this is an ensemble that is something he probably threw together himself from loose materials he found lying around, much like the way he built his shack. And just given the history of the character, or at least what we knew about him in Friday the 13th Part 1 going into Part 2, this seemed to be the most realistic depiction of what this character might have looked like after all of these years. In fourth place is going to be Jason from Friday the 13th 3D. This is obviously the most classic look for Jason as it's the first time he acquired the hockey mask. It's the most pristine the hockey mask would appear throughout the franchise. There's some interesting history on who it was that actually came up with the idea to give Jason the hockey mask as nobody's really 100% claimed ownership of the idea. Sean Cunningham said that it was director Steve Miner who came up with the idea because he was a huge fan of hockey. And Larry Zerner, who played the character of Shelley, said that it was actually the 3D supervisor, Marty Sadoff, as they knew they just needed something more eye-catching that would have popped out of the screen, as the potato sack just wasn't a distinct enough look for them. Jason has now ditched the red hair and beard, and he's now completely bald. He also has a bit of a hunchback, um, which I don't think that we see in any other movies after this, so it's kind of just unique to this movie, and it's funny that they didn't give the hunchback to the part two Jason that actually looked more like Quasimodo. The reason why I wouldn't rank this one higher is because the design of the sculpt and makeup effects of Jason's face kind of bring this one down a notch. There were three different faces used for Jason in part three. The first one is the Stan Winston sculpt, which was used primarily throughout the movie, but was mostly concealed by shadows or while Jason was wearing the hockey mask. It also appears in the alternate ending, which only exists as production stills now, where Chris hallucinates Jason decapitating her the next morning. Because this look was a bit of a departure from the way Jason appeared in part one and two, they ended up reshooting a completely new ending, which is the one that we see in the movie, and then the unmasking scene was reshot as well. Mostly, this one just looks like a bloated version of the master from season one of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The second face is the Doug White flashback sculpt, which retains the same look as the first two movies with kind of the droopy eye, but this was deemed to be too unrefined by Steve Miner and was only used in Chris's flashback sequence where it is again mostly obscured from view. 
After this, Doug White came back with the third and final sculpt, which is the one that we see in the movie during Jason's unmasking outside of the bar, which still looks a little goofy to me, but out of the three that they did make, this one is definitely the best. In third place is going to be Jason from Jason Takes Manhattan. I'm guessing this had a lot to do with Paramount not granting the movie a larger budget, but there's not a lot of continuity in Jason's look from the last movie to this one. Obviously, he gets a new mask here as the one that he had from Shelley for all those years was finally destroyed at the end of part seven. Assuming that this mask is a novelty prop, I don't understand how whoever produced this product within the Friday the 13th universe knew that Jason's old mask specifically had the ax wound in the forehead unless this was something that they ascertained through crime scene photos or from survivor testimonies. But then the continuity with the rest of the mask is completely off as the red markings are narrower and the arrows are pointing in the wrong direction. Again, I'm probably being way too nitpicky about this, but if this was a brand new mask, why even include the ax mark to begin with? What I do really like about this mask is that it has a very yellowish tinge to it. It kind of makes it pop out a little bit more and it gives it a distinct flavor apart from all the other masks that we've seen. I also love how Jason is constantly wet, whether or not he's just come out of the water or he's been on dry land for hours. And this is because between takes, they would douse Kane Hodder with slime. And considering the nautical setting of this movie, as well as the toxic waste motif, it works really well for the design. The only thing that's really holding this Jason back is when he's unmasked and we see the design of the face, which to me has always just looked like a rotten, moldy jack-o'-lantern that's been left outside all through winter. Again, this must be a budgetary thing, but it's such a step down from the zombie look that we saw for him in the last two movies. In second place is going to be Jason from the final chapter. This is pretty much the same design from part three. It's just showing a lot more wear and tear. The red paint on the brow triangle is now half worn off and the mask has the infamous ax wound in the forehead delivered from Chris at the end of the last movie, which has stained it with blood. But besides that, the fact that this is elevated just a little bit higher on this list for me is that the face is based on the Tom Savini design from part one. And this is a huge improvement over part three, not just for the sculpt itself, but for the animatronics effect that they had for the dummy. I will admit that I'm probably more of a fan of human Jason than I am of zombie Jason. And you might know this if you'd already seen my rankings for the Friday the 13th movies, but I just think that this is the most classic look for the character along with part three. But I do prefer this one because we do get more wear and tear, we get the battle wounds and the face design and effects are just way better. But in first place, and I feel as though this should come as no surprise to anyone, is this is most people's favorite version of Jason, will be Jason from The New Blood. I think the reason why this version of Jason is on a much higher echelon than the rest is because this movie was directed by John Carl Beekler, whose background in film is predominantly in makeup and special effects. And because of that, I feel like he put a great deal of attention into the continuity of Jason's overall look. Most notably, the mask is chewed up on on the one side from where Megan sawed into his face with the boat propeller at the end of part six. The ax mark in the mask is back to its right size. The straps are black. The only problem is that there's no bullet hole from where Sheriff Garris shot Jason. Everything about the face is perfect though, and this is probably the liveliest he's looked, at least in the zombie era. We really do see all the damage that's been inflicted upon it throughout the years. We've got the exposed jaw and teeth, you've got the ax wound to the forehead and the machete scar in the side of the head, and oddly enough we can see the bullet hole despite it not being present on the mask. And it's not just the face, as the entire body has this level of detail. As we have the exposed spine and bone. Everything right down to the tattered clothing just shows a lot of decomposition from water damage being stuck at the bottom of Crystal Lake all these years. We even have the chain link around his neck. This is definitely the most monstrous Jason has looked, and it's sad that we haven't gotten anything on par with this in subsequent movies, as I feel Paramount just kind of cheaped out on the budget, and I don't think New Line ever really cared or understood what the character of Jason was. The sad thing is I don't think we're ever going to see this version of Jason again because if they do eventually reboot the franchise they're probably going to go back to the human version of Jason from before the final chapter. I do find it fitting that this was the movie in which the original Shelly hockey mask was finally destroyed because I feel this is peak Jason and every Jason that came after
after this did not deserve to wear that mask, but that's just my opinion. I definitely think that this is the best version of Jason that we got, hands down. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporter, Kyle Beard, as well as artist Matthew Terrian, who once again allowed me to use his illustrations for this video's thumbnail. You can check out more of his work located in the links down in the descriptions, or stick around here with me and catch up on my rankings of all the Michael Myers masks or all the films in the Friday the 13th franchise. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I've been Zach Cherry, and I'll be right back.